Today, some scientists are attempting to create mirror image life forms in the laboratory. They believe it may soon be possible to create mirror bacteria, which are mirror versions of normal bacteria. But this has triggered serious concerns among other scientists. This is because our body's immune system and the medicines we rely on today may be completely ineffective against such mirror bacteria. Some scientists have even warned that creating these mirror organisms could lead to catastrophic consequences, potentially threatening the existence of all life on Earth. This naturally raises the question, what exactly are mirror organisms? They are not simply creatures that look like our reflections in a mirror. Instead, they are organisms made up of molecules that are the mirror images of the ones in our body. Many of the chemical compounds in our body have mirror versions. This means their molecules have left-handed and right-handed forms. For instance, DNA is one such molecule. DNA can exist as right-handed or left-handed. But here is the twist. All the DNA found in life forms on Earth is right-handed. There is not a single known organism with left-handed DNA as their genetic material. So, what would happen if we were to create a living organism with left-handed DNA? What exactly are mirror organisms? And what do we mean by left-handed and right-handed molecules? Let us explore these fascinating questions in this video. Hi friends, welcome to a new video from Science Simplified for All. Let us first understand what is meant by mirror image or left-handed and right-handed in the context of this video. Based on certain characteristics of their mirror images, objects can generally be divided into two categories. The first category includes objects that are identical to their mirror images. For example, the letter A looks exactly the same as its mirror image. If you were shown both, you would not be able to tell which is the original and which is the reflection. And it is not just A. Many other letters in English, like H, I and O, also share this property. This characteristic is not limited to letters. Many geometric shapes, like spheres, circles and pyramids, are also identical to their mirror images. However, not all objects are like this. For instance, the letter R and its mirror image are not exactly the same. If you take the mirror image of R and try to superimpose it on the original R, no matter how much you rotate it, they will never align perfectly. The most relatable example of this is our hands. Your left hand and its mirror image are not identical. If you take the mirror image of your left hand and try to place it on your left hand itself, no matter how much you rotate it, it will never align perfectly. The direction of the fingers will always differ. This property is called chirality. In simple terms, chirality refers to a situation where an object and its mirror image are not identical and cannot be superimposed on each other. Objects that exhibit this property are called chiral objects. Another interesting point to note is that the mirror image of your left hand is identical to your right hand. In other words, your right hand is the mirror image of your left hand. Based on this property, when an object and its mirror image are different, we classify one as left-handed and the other as right-handed. For example, the mirror image of a left-handed conch shell is a right-handed conch shell. Similarly, the mirror image of a left-handed screw is a right-handed screw. To summarize, in chiral objects, one form is referred to as left-handed, while its mirror image is referred to as right-handed. Such left and right distinctions also exist in the molecules of certain compounds. For example, the compound glucose, which is the primary source of energy for our body, is a chiral molecule. This means glucose exists in two types, left-handed and right-handed. We will explain later in the video how a molecule can have left and right forms. For now, just understand that glucose molecules can be classified into two types. Left-handed glucose, called L-glucose, and right-handed glucose, called D-glucose. Both L-glucose and D-glucose share the same chemical formula. The number and type of atoms, as well as the way these atoms are bonded, are almost identical in both. However, one is the mirror image of the other. When glucose is artificially synthesized in a lab, both L-glucose and D-glucose are produced in equal amounts. But in the plant and animal kingdoms, only D-glucose is found and utilized. L-glucose does not occur naturally. Plants produce D-glucose through photosynthesis, 
and animals use it for energy. Our bodies cannot metabolize L-glucose to produce energy. Naturally, this raises the question, if L-glucose is sweet but cannot be metabolized, could it be used as a low-calorie sweetener? Theoretically, yes. But there is a problem. Unlike D-glucose, which plants can naturally produce, no plants or organisms produce L-glucose. It has to be synthesized artificially in a lab, which is a very expensive process. Moreover, we do not know if L-glucose has any other side effects. That is why it has not been developed or used as a sweetener. Our bodies and cells are made up of various proteins. Similarly, the chemical processes in our body, such as hormonal regulation and enzymatic activities, are controlled by proteins. Even the antibodies that protect us from diseases are proteins. These proteins are made up of different types of amino acids. Amino acids also come in left-handed and right-handed forms. However, all living organisms on Earth exclusively use left-handed amino acids. Right-handed amino acids can also exist, but there are no known organisms that utilize them. The instructions for how proteins are made from amino acids are stored in DNA. DNA also has left-handed and right-handed forms. However, all DNA found in living organisms on Earth is right-handed. There is no known organism that uses left-handed DNA as its genetic material. Although left-handed DNA can occur transiently in some organisms, it is only a temporary phenomenon. During this time, the DNA does not carry out any normal functions. This means that all living organisms on Earth use right-handed sugars, left-handed amino acids, and right-handed DNA. The exact opposite combination, left-handed sugars, right-handed amino acids, and left-handed DNA is theoretically possible. Organisms that use such mirror image molecules instead of the ones used by normal life forms are referred to as mirror life. In other words, mirror life refers to organisms made up of molecules that are the mirror images of those used by conventional life. Although such organisms do not exist today, certain experiments that could help create them are currently underway. Scientists have already developed DNA polymerase, the enzyme required to synthesize left-handed DNA. With a few more breakthroughs, it may soon be possible to create mirror bacteria. However, this experiment has raised significant concerns among scientists. Our body's immune system recognizes harmful bacteria by detecting specific proteins on their surfaces. But proteins made from mirror amino acids may not be detectable by our immune system. If this happens, our body would be unable to identify or destroy such bacteria. Additionally, most antibiotics we use today would likely be ineffective against these mirror bacteria. This means that if a disease caused by such bacteria were to emerge, we might have no way to control or treat it. This is not just a problem for humans. It could potentially affect all life forms on Earth. In summary, if such bacteria were to escape from a laboratory under any circumstances, they could potentially trigger a mass extinction event. This is the primary reason for the concerns surrounding these experiments. You might now be wondering, if such experiments carry such a significant risk, why are they being conducted in the first place? Interestingly, these experiments did not begin with the goal of creating mirror life. Our body deals with a wide variety of chiral molecules daily, apart from glucose, amino acids, and DNA. In some cases, both the left-handed and right-handed versions have effects on our body, and sometimes these effects are completely different. For instance, consider carvone, a compound where the right-handed molecule smells like mint, while the left-handed molecule smells like caraway seeds. Similarly, methophen has two versions. The right-handed molecule acts as a cough suppressant, while the left-handed molecule is a sedative. Another example is thalidomide. One version of this compound was used as a medicine for morning sickness, but its mirror image caused severe genetic disorders in unborn children. These examples show that the same compound's left-handed and right-handed versions can have completely different effects. In many situations, there is a need to produce only one specific version of such a molecule. This necessity is what initially led to these experiments. Additionally, some of these experiments aim to create new types of drugs that have no effect on human proteins but can selectively target and kill bacteria. 
it is from this line of research that we have now reached the point where creating mirror life seems possible. It may also be possible that mirror bacteria will not have any effect on us, contrary to what some scientists fear. However, the scientific community is well aware of the risks associated with such experiments, and we can only hope that they proceed with extreme caution. Now, let us explore how molecules exhibit left-handed and right-handed properties. This topic is slightly technical and requires a basic understanding of chemistry. That is why we have saved this part for the end. We will try to explain it as simply as possible. We know that the chemical formula of water is H2O. A water molecule consists of two hydrogen atoms bonded to a central oxygen atom at a specific angle, as shown here. If you take the mirror image of this molecule, it is identical to the original and can be perfectly superimposed. This means water does not have left-handed or right-handed properties and is a non-chiral molecule. Let us now look at methane, the gas commonly referred to as natural gas. A methane molecule consists of one carbon atom and four hydrogen atoms arranged in a unique shape called a tetrahedron. Have you noticed the shape of a caltrop used to puncture tires? It has three legs on the ground and one pointing upward with all angles being equal. The structure of a methane molecule is similar with the carbon atom at the center and the four hydrogen atoms symmetrically arranged around it. If you take the mirror image of a methane molecule, it is identical to the original. The mirror image can be perfectly superimposed on the original without any difference. Therefore, methane is also a non-chiral molecule. Now, imagine replacing three of the hydrogen atoms in a methane molecule with atoms of three different elements while keeping one hydrogen atom intact. This results in a situation where a carbon atom is surrounded by four different atoms or groups, as shown here. For example, one hydrogen atom remains, while the other three positions are occupied by fluorine, chlorine and bromine. Such a compound does exist, but its name is not relevant here. If you take the mirror image of this molecule, you will notice a small difference compared to the original. When you try to superimpose the mirror image on the original molecule, they do not align perfectly. This can be understood from the illustration. In the original molecule, fluorine, chlorine and bromine might appear arranged in a clockwise direction when viewed from the top, while in the mirror image, these elements are arranged in an anti-clockwise direction. This inability to superimpose the mirror image on the original molecule is what makes them chiral molecules. One of these molecules is referred to as left-handed and the other is referred to as right-handed. It is important to note that both molecules contain the same types of atoms and are bonded in the same way to the central carbon atom. The only difference lies in the relative spatial arrangement of the atoms. Because of this, the physical and chemical properties of these molecules are almost identical. Their reactions are also nearly the same in most cases. However, when interacting with another chiral molecule, these two forms can behave very differently. This is the unique characteristic of chirality. What we have just seen is a very simple example of a chiral molecule. However, the chiral molecules present in our bodies are far more complex. When we say that the DNA, amino acids and sugar molecules in our body all have left-handed and right-handed versions, this is the type of difference we are referring to. The fascinating fact is that all living organisms on Earth have only right-handed sugars, left-handed amino acids and right-handed DNA. This property, exhibited by life on Earth, is called homochirality, meaning a preference for only one particular chiral form of a molecule. Mirror life, on the other hand, refers to organisms made up of the mirror image molecules of these. Left-handed sugars, right-handed amino acids and left-handed DNA. That is the fundamental difference between normal life and mirror life. Through this video, we hope you gained a basic understanding of what chirality is and what mirror organisms are. If you enjoyed this video, please like and share it. For more videos like this, subscribe to our channel and enable the bell icon. Thank you.